Hey, so in the last video, we showed you what your bot can see, and today we're going to talk about what your bot can do. Uh, there's, for each observation space that you would have seen in the last video, that will have a corresponding action space. The feature and RGB spaces have an action space, and the raw space has an action space. Um, the feature and RGB space come with a restriction of what's called available actions, which essentially helps your bot to know what can or can't be done at a particular time. So if you haven't got an army unit selected, then obviously you can't attack without an army unit. Uh, so it has a thing called available actions and you can disable this with ensure available actions equals false uh, on the environment. The raw space is kind of interesting in that you don't have to move the camera around and you don't have to select the units. So uh, where the feature in RGB space, if you want to move around and, and change what your screen is, uh, you'll have to move the camera. With the raw space, you don't have to do that. And in the feature in RGB space, if you want to act on a unit, you'll have to select the unit first and then perform an action. Uh, with the raw space, there's no need to do that because you can uh, issue commands just using the unit tag information. Uh, one thing that does happen in, in both the uh, feature and RGB space and then the raw space is that actions are grouped together. So when you attack with multiple unit types, you know, you've got a marine and you've got a marauder and you've got, um, you know, a battle cruiser, each unit will have its own attack command. And what PlayC2 does is it groups all of those commands together into one attack command for you so you don't have to issue each individual one. So let's start with the feature space. Um, with the feature space, all the actions are taken on the screen, uh, the minimap, individual units or control groups. And in order to enable the feature action space, you set action space equals actions.actionspace.features on your agent interface format. The RGB space uh, is essentially the same as the feature space. So every, all the actions are, are the same. Uh, everything works pretty much in the same way. You just determine the, that you want to use the RGB space by setting the action space to actions.actionspace.rgb instead. Now, the process of performing an action is done every time your agent or your bot takes a step. So we know that there are 22.4 steps per second. and so in, in each time one of those steps comes in, you'll enter your step method. Uh, and then at the end of your step method, you always need to return an action. So in this case, we're returning a know what, which does nothing. Uh, so return action stop function call and the action ID, in this case, actions dot functions dot know what dot ID. Uh, and there are no parameters in this one. So we have an empty array at the end there. So this is how you act in the feature space and the raw space is slightly different. We'll go into that a little bit later. So there are a few sort of base actions. Um, so you might typically think of an action to perform in a game as oh, I'm going to attack or I'm going to, to build a building, but actually there are some sort of base actions that you need to perform, such as moving the camera or, or clicking on a unit. Uh, you can move the camera around. So there's a move camera command. Uh, it accepts a point on the minimap, so an X and Y coordinate for the minimap. Uh, and then one of the quirks with this is when you when you move the camera and you give it coordinates, the observation for the camera coordinates may not be the same as the coordinates that you gave it. There's, there's kind of some little quirkiness that happens there. So you just have to be aware that if the camera's not in the right position, uh, you can't necessarily rely on the X and Y coordinates matching. Next, we can select a point. It's kind of a funny term, but essentially what we're doing there is clicking on the screen and clicking on a unit. We want to, we want to select a unit that is under that point on the screen. Uh, so you send it the X and Y coordinates on the screen. Uh, so if your screen has a larger resolution than your minimap, you have to keep that in mind. They're not going to be the same X and Y coordinate uh, sort of dimensions there. And then there's a second parameter that you pass in, which is the selection type. And, and a lot of actions have these selection types that can vary slightly depending on the, the action itself. If you do have uh, a series of units selected, multi-select, uh, then you can select a unit from that multi-select uh, using the select unit command. So this might be a little bit confusing. You might think this means you can select a specific unit on the screen. That's not what it's for. It's just for multi-selections. One trick that happens here is when you do select an idle worker, it will move the camera position. So you have to be aware that uh, if you're going to select an idle worker, your camera will, will move. 
you probably want to move your camera back to wherever you need to perform the next action, like placing a building or something like that. So with the idle worker playing F1, we have select or army, which is F2. Uh, so the action for that is called select army. And once again, it uh, receives a selection type, uh, select or add. So potentially you could have multiple buildings selected and you want to add the army to that. You can, you can do that if you like. There's an action called build queue. Uh, and what you can do with the build queue is uh, cancel it. So this is a simple one type action. Uh, so if you have the build queue selected, uh, then you can remove a specific uh, unit from that production. Okay, so that completes a lot of the base actions. Next thing you can do with the feature actions is operate on the minimap and the screen. So each one of these is, is kind of similar in that they receive a coordinate, uh, but of course, if you're operating on the minimap, those coordinates have to relate to the minimap. And if you're operating on the screen, those coordinates have to relate to the screen. Uh, most of these actions will accept a queue type. So you can have a queue type of now, which means to perform the action immediately and not queue it up. It's just as you would with say a right click, um, or you can queue them such as a, a shift click. And so this enables your bot to say, potentially say, move here, move here, and then attack here. So there are a few different types of minimap and screen actions. Some of them include attacking, moving, patrolling, scanning, building, harvesting minerals or, or vespine, uh, landing buildings uh, or loading units, or, or even casting spells like heal or repair or force field or Yamato cannon, those kinds of things. The other type of action is called a quick action. And this is essentially like a, as a human, you might have a unit selected and you can press a hot key and this will um, you know, maybe enable or disable a certain piece of functionality or it will perform an action for you very quickly. You don't have to give it any coordinates. So you can also queue these types of actions such you know, by doing a typical left click, um, you know, would be now, uh, or you can queue them with, with a shift click. Um, so the queue type is now or queued. And some examples of these quick actions, uh, you can cloak or decloak a unit, you can hold fire, you can build units or research upgrades, you can build add-ons. However, one quirk with the add-ons is um, there's kind of a bug in the API where if you want to build an add-on, uh, it will treat that quick command as a screen command, so you do have to give it coordinates. So instead of doing that, I'd recommend that you lift the unit and then you perform the screen command with the co coordinates and all allow the building to land again. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll try to build uh, and it may lift the building up and you'll have to go, oh, hang on, we're lifted. Now we need to land it again. Uh, you can also cast a spell like burrow or explode. Uh, you can morph a unit or building. Uh, you can cancel a command and you can unload units. These are all types of quick actions. So that's it for, for features and RGB action space. The other main action space is the raw action space. So just as the raw observations uh, take in the entire world space or, or world, the, the, the entire map, the raw space can act on the entire raw space and the entire map. And just as the raw observations can see all of the units, the raw space can act on all of the units. So you enable raw space actions using action space equals actions dot action space dot raw on your agent interface format. Okay, so acting in the raw space is slightly different to acting in the feature space in that you return an action type of actions dot raw underscore functions. And in this case, raw underscore functions dot no op does the same as the feature space action of no op. It's, it's kind of almost easier to do it this way. It's, it's a little bit tidier. So as we said, the, uh, the raw space actions are similar to feature actions, uh, except they operate in the world space. And if you specified a raw uh, resolution, you have to remember that those coordinates are sort of within that resolution. Now, raw space actions usually require a unit tag or several unit tags. Uh, and this is interesting because it gives you much finer grained control over your units. So where you would normally, as a human, have to uh, look on the screen and say, you know what, I need to grab, say, an SCV that isn't currently getting minerals and isn't getting uh, Vespine and isn't currently building something, uh, and then specifically look around and, and click on that SCV, the raw space, uh, because you've got the raw observations and you can say, oh, I need, you know, I, I need 
to give me all the SCVs that don't have the mineral buff, don't have the best bean buff, and, and currently don't have any orders, then you can immediately find all of those unit tags and you can use all of them or one at random. You can find the one that's closest to the location that you want to act on. And so this is really handy for giving sort of an advantage over what a human player would have. Uh, your bot can do much better things when it can choose the specific units that it needs for that action. So at this stage, I'd encourage you to, to give it a go, uh, play around with the actions and, and see what you can come up with. Uh, we did have a video that shows you how to uh, build some basic units and attack the enemy and this covers some of the actions that we talked about today. Uh, give it a shot uh, and let us know how you go with it.